It's all over the news. The latest domestically developed general purpose processor, the Long Sun 3C6000, has been officially launched in Beijing. The key point is that it uses our country's independently designed instruction system, the Long Arc architecture, and does not rely on any foreign authorized technology or supply chains. This is the latest processor that is fully developed and controllable by China. Our semiconductor tree is about to take off. Our chips are about to take off. We no longer have to bow to the United States. A few days ago, China unveiled in Beijing its new domestically developed general purpose processor, the Long Sun 3C6000. The Chinese regime has heavily promoted the processor, emphasizing that it uses an entirely self designed architecture and does not rely on any foreign authorized technology, fully achieving self reliance and control. This marks a significant step in China's effort to free itself from the constraints imposed by the West. The news quickly went viral, sparking widespread excitement among nationalistic supporters online. The internet was flooded with an atmosphere of triumph, celebrating China's rise in the semiconductor industry and its successful bypass of Western powers. Comments poured in, with many expressing their enthusiasm, crushing Intel and outperforming TSMC. <laughs> Brothers, tomorrow the semiconductor industry is taking off. Longshan technology is fully independent. You ask what I'm doing? I'm getting some exercise so we can fly high tomorrow. Longshan just dropped a bombshell that has shaken the global chip industry to its core. The 100% domestic 3C6000 CPU made with a 12nm process goes head to head with Intel's 10nm top configuration, and its computing power even surpasses Intel by 23%. A CCTV reporter captured American experts staring at the test data for ages without saying a word, their expressions as if they'd seen a ghost. They knew we could make chips, but who would have thought? That with outdated technology, we could pull off such a stunning leap forward. Here's a set of data that made Intel rewire its PowerPoint overnight. Our self developed long link technology has taken things to the next level. The flagship version with 64 cores and 128 threads outperforms Intel's 40 core Platinum 8380. What's even more impressive is that in real tests, database query speeds are 17% faster than Intel's third generation products, and cloud computing scenarios led by 23%. And here's the kicker, they're using 10nm, while we're using 12nm. It's like driving a domestic Wuling Mini EV and overtaking a Porsche on a curve. The global chip giants are tearing apart circuit diagrams and still can't figure out how much alien technology is hidden in our long arc architecture. Now the entire globe chip industry is studying long arc. Who knows? Maybe one day long arc will become the new international standard. So what exactly is the level of long arc 3C6000 which has been placed on a pedestal? When industry experts began looking into the actual performance data of the processor, they couldn't help but laugh. A blogger pointed out that while the official announcement boasts the Long Sun 3C6000's impressive performance, featuring a 12nm or 14nm process, supporting up to 64 cores with a 2.1 gigahertz clock speed, and power consumption ranging between 100 to 300 watts, this performance would have been somewhat acceptable five years ago. But it's now 2025, and it seems almost laughable. While the 64 core claim sounds impressive at first, a closer look reveals that the Long Sun processor is actually on par with Intel's third generation Xeon series and a product from 2020, which used a 10nm process and supported up to 40 cores and 80 threads. Fast forward to 2025, Intel has already released its 14th generation processors, with performance having improved exponentially, not to mention TSMC, which produces Apple's M series chips like the M4 and the M4 Pro, built on a 3nm process. These chips dominate the market, with single core performance and energy efficiency far surpassing Intel. Some bloggers pointed out that the Long Sun 3C6000, when compared to Intel's 14th generation or Apple M4, is far behind in every way. Its floating point calculation capabilities are particularly lagging. 
Yet the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, proudly claims to have bypassed the competition with this outdated piece of technology. As soon as the nationalist supporters heard the claims of self-reliance and no dependence on foreign technology, they were energized, thinking China's semiconductor industry had become invincible. Some even fantasized that this chip would soon be used in supercomputers, AI servers, and even smartphones, imagining that the next generation iPhone would feature a long sun processor. Even more laughable is their complete ignorance of technical details, blindly accepting official data as gospel. When the authorities say it rivals Intel, they take it at face value without questioning which generation of Intel they are supposedly competing with. What frustrates both users and bloggers the most, however, is the ecosystem surrounding the Long Sun processor. From a serious chip development perspective, creating a set of instruction sets is not the most difficult part. The hardest challenge is establishing a complete ecosystem. If Long Sun fails to make breakthroughs in the ecosystem, it is likely to remain at a disadvantage for a long time and struggle to develop. Some netizens mocked saying, trust me, even if the Long Sun reaches the level of Intel's 14th generation, few will want it. I've been using Long Sun for 4 to 5 years. Its ecosystem currently only supports lightweight office tasks. Even sending files on WeChat doesn't fall out for direct opening. You have to save them first to view. Microsoft doesn't give you system certification. So how can you use it? When talking about Long Sun's ecosystem, it's important to understand the background. The Long Sun 3C6000 was developed by Long Sun Technology Co. Ltd., a company initially founded in 2021 as a joint venture between the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Beijing Municipal Government. It is a purely state-owned enterprise. Long Sun 3C6000 was specifically developed to meet the authorities' requirements, not market demand, meaning it's essentially a product of a planned economy. Similar to Huawei, this chip is also claimed to be entirely domestically designed without using any foreign technology. The core IP is all self-designed, eliminating the need to pay licensing fees to external companies. Therefore, compared to traditional x86 architecture, it uh, does have a certain cost advantage. But like Huawei, the Long Sun processor does not support foreign operating systems like Windows and Linux only supporting some domestic systems, such as NeoKillin, Killin OS, and its own LongNix system. The main reason why the Long Sun processor is incompatible with Microsoft Windows is due to its different CPU architecture. Long Sun uses China's self-designed LongArc architecture, while Windows is designed specifically for x86, like Intel and AMD and ARM like Apple and Qualcomm architectures. As a result, Windows cannot be directly installed or run on Long Sun. To run some Windows software on the Long Sun platform, technologies like instruction set conversion are required to translate x86 instructions into Long Arc instructions, similar to Apple's Rosetta 2 on the M1 chip. However, even with such conversion, full compatibility is difficult to achieve. Some programs, particularly those highly dependent on hardware or requiring high performance, often fail to run stably or have largely reduced efficiency. So what kind of software can the Long Sun actually run? Primarily domestically produced software, such as Office applications like WPS, Kingsoft Office, and UOS Office, software like the Adobe Suite and DaVinci Resolve, which are closed source, cannot run. It is said that efforts are underway to replace them with domestically produced alternatives. Additionally, many hardware components are not supported, such as NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards. For graphics processing, users would have to rely on domestic alternatives like more threads. Sound cards and RAID cards are also unsupported. Thus, while the long sum processor may barely match Intel's performance from four years ago, there remains a huge gap in terms of compatibility. A blogger analyzed the underlying reason. The Long Sun products, being a product of a planned economy, are primarily used by state-owned enterprises, government institutions, and industries like finance, energy, and military. Therefore, the focus is not on cost-performance ratios or high performance, but rather on ensuring information security and autonomy. In March, the Long Sun 3C6000 passed the security and reliability evaluation by the China Information Technology Security Evaluation Center and received the highest certification. 
In other words, the Long Sun CPU has yet to truly enter the market. It is not a consumer grade or enterprise grade product and lacks any real market competitiveness. Observant netizens also noticed that most of the reports claiming the Long Sun 3C6000 is a big seller mainly come from government agencies. The Long Sun CPU has won another bird. This time, it's over 30,000 units. Recently, Long Sun Zhongke announced that in the party and government procurement markets in Hubei and Shanxi provinces, over 30,000 units of terminals based on the Long Sun CPU processor have been awarded the bid. Additionally, Long Sun has once again successfully been selected for the 2025 National Energy Group's group level domestic office terminal procurement list. This marks the widespread recognition of the Long Sun processor by users in the energy sector. Some joked that computers and servers equipped with Long Sun processors don't even need a graphics card. They're good for tasks like document editing or browsing the web, but definitely not for gaming video editing, mining, or training large language models. Other netizens criticized it, saying it's not user-friendly and it's ridiculously expensive. The Long Sun computer is so slow. I've been using it for three years. It's hard to use, but I'll endure it because the country's digital information security is the most important. Don't complain about it. If the day ever comes, it'll be the only option we have. An industry blogger commented that whether people admit it or not, in the PC realm, x86 chips dominate, holding over 90% of the market share. ARM CPUs are only used in Apple's Mac series and some servers, but overall, x86 remains unmatched. As for domestic chips, they are still far from catching up with mainstream processors. Did everyone see the video released by CCTV? In the section showcasing the Long Sun ecosystem's achievements, it shows that the Long Sun 3C6000 is already being used in domestically produced Inspur servers. But what's interesting is that during the presentation, they also displayed the memory and SSD hard drives. Take a look at where this memory is from. It's Hynix from South Korea. Although they didn't specify that it's an SSD, this hard drive is from Kingston. So, this so-called domestically developed CPU will be nothing if separated from Western hardware. Not only can it not be used in desktop computers, but it also can't be used in servers. Despite this, the Long Sun craze quickly spread, igniting not only the tech industry, but also the stock market. Many nationalistic supporters and passionate retail investors flooded the comment sections, posting messages like, semiconductors are about to take off domestic chips will drive A shares to new heights. On the second day after the Long Sun announcement, the stock price of Long Sun Zhongke surged by over 13%, with trading volume skyrocketing to over 2.1 billion yuan. A large number of retail investors followed the trend, creating a short-term chip frenzy. Yet, it is worth noting that main capital showed a net outflow that day, indicating that while retail investors were entering the market, institutions and speculative capital chose to cash out at the high point. The trend that followed was even more telling. After peaking on June 27, the stock price gradually fell back. By early July, Long Sun had receded by over 15% from its peak. The trading volume also shrank significantly, with the hype quickly cooling off. It seems like this wave of chip fever, driven by keywords like indigenous research and development, national security, and breaking free from Western dependence, wasn't truly based on breakthroughs in product performance or improved profitability. Instead, it resembled a short-term patriotic sentiment-driven hype. It followed a similar pattern to the electric vehicles craze a few years ago. Policies were introduced, concepts were hyped, and capital surged. In the end, the retail investors who chased the hype and bought at high prices were left holding the bag, ultimately losing everything. Some bloggers calmly analyze China's current capacity for technological innovation. They believe that China doesn't have any true technological innovation, but is merely imitating and chasing others. From electric vehicles to the Long Sun 3C6000. These aren't real technological innovations, but mere imitations. Some might wonder why China's system doesn't cultivate truly innovative talent. The blogger says to visit Chinese schools and you'll see. 
Students with original ideas or independent thoughts are often suppressed. He shared an example where a student fainted during a break, but no one dared to act independently or help or even call a teacher. A child has collapsed. Did you see that? A child actually collapsed, and no one did anything. The teacher isn't here, and no one is helping. A parent filmed this video from upstairs, sparking heated discussion online. Many questioned why the current education system is making children so indifferent. There were also parents arguing that the children not intervening was in line with school discipline, so they were not wrong. Others commented that this indifference is not just seen in schools; it persists when these children enter the society. In the workplace, bosses often want employees to follow their orders without question, expecting them to function like emotionless machines carrying out tasks. In such an educational and work environment, how can innovation emerge? This also explains why in China, workers often face unemployment by the age of 35, because new machines or younger workers always operate faster than the old ones. Why doesn't this happen in Silicon Valley tech companies? Well, aside from well-established legal and regulatory environment, the main reason is that those companies genuinely need innovation, and true innovation requires independent thinking. Accumulation of knowledge, wisdom, and inspiration. Experienced 35-year-old employees are in the prime of their creative potential and are invaluable assets to the company, so they are not easily fired. In contrast, in China, true innovation is not as critical. It's enough to copy and imitate foreign innovations. So employers don't need employees to have inspiration; they just need strong bodies to do hard work. Once employees pass 35 and their physical condition declines. They are often replaced by younger, more capable workers.